Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, we are going to look at building this new functionality where a user is able to register to our store. So this is my registration form. I have already filled it up and what happens is if I click on sign up, right? Let me open up the network tab as well so that we have a better understanding. Put it on the right hand side. And when I sign up, it makes an HTTP request to the vendors shop api right which is our this shop api right we have a mutation as per the documentation which says register customer account which takes certain parameters if we go into this it takes email title first name last name phone number and password the email being a mandatory field and then when i go to the vendor admin and if i refresh I will see the John Doe user created right now. Correct. So let's delete that and quickly jump into how we can go ahead and create this form. We will be using Formic along with Yup for validations and then we will create the mutation. We'll configure our Apollo client so that we are able to execute those mutations, call the shop API and register a user. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So the first thing that I have done is obviously inside pages, go into the user slash register, right? And I have created that index.tsx file. Now in this, as per our typical structure, we have a next page, we have layout, and then I have a component called registration form. Now this registration form will typically, once the registration is successfully done, raise an event but as of now it is not doing anything it is just rendering itself no props nothing as of now okay now this is our component let's go step by step what is happening inside our components so i'll just do a full screen and let's understand what is happening all right so we have our component over here the registration form we are using this mutation we can go into the details a little later but first let's understand how the component is structured so if i look at this component we have this get started today sign into your account rather sign up for your account that's what this messaging should be but then we have a formic component this formic component is what i have done using the an npm module so if i show you my package.json i have formic i have yup okay these two modules are being used and if you go to the top you will see that i am importing these stuff from formic okay so the component is here the formic component is used to create initialize the form we have a property over here called initial values let's look at what this initial value is so I've declared a constant. This is not a state, but a constant which says form init values of type values. Now this is, although this is not mandatory, you can skip this, but I feel that defining the schema or the shape of that object does help. So I have title, first name, last name, email address, phone number, and password. Okay. And that is something which I have defined over here. Now, just so that you know, the form filling is a little easier. I have predefined this, but ideally you will have everything as empty strings because Formic will handle the state properties of your form and it will auto populate with the values whenever the form elements are changing. Okay. Anyways, so this is our initial values. So Formic knows what exactly will be visible on the form elements when you know, this component is rendered. It is also useful if you have the edit form because then you can populate the values over here and then you can easily show that in the form. Okay, now the initial values are set. I'm saying that on submit, this particular function needs to be called. So let's see what are we doing in this function. Handle submit is a function which gets two parameters. One is values. This is of type values. Again, I know this is what is going to come up because initial values is also of that same shape, right? 
So values is fine. Then we are taking two things from formic helpers. Obviously reset form is not being used so far, but we have set submitting, which I set to false initially so that I don't have the problem of submitting the form again and again. And reset form we can use in case, you know, like after the registration is successful, let's just say you want to clear out the form and then you make the page transition, right? So you can use that function over here. So form submitting is set to false. I'm just consoling the values. Then I destructure the values and put everything in the mutation. We will look at the mutations in a little bit. Hold on to that. Okay, but just understand that the submit function is running the mutation. Okay, we will go into the details. So this is done, on submit is done. And then the next important piece is the validation schema. This is where the yup module comes into picture. So registration schema, which I have passed into this property is basically a yup object. So this is a file inside the same folder. What I tend, what I like about this structure is you know, if I copy this entire registration form, the schema goes with it. Okay. Because this is the only file which will use the schema. So I, I thought it would make sense. Let me know if you feel otherwise, and we can definitely work that out. But yeah, I feel this is fine. Okay. So now these are the validation rules. But first we are exporting a constant called registration schema, which is of type yup object. And then I'm defining the shape. Okay. So the shape says we have properties like title, first name, last name, email address, password, and phone number, which is exactly what we have over here. If we go over here, right? Okay. Then what do we have? We have the validation rules. For example, the title, I'm saying that it needs to be of type string, minimum two characters, maximum 155. Similarly, string, first name, last name are all same. Email address, I'm expecting a string. And then there is a helper which validates whether it is a valid email or not. I'm saying that it needs to be there. And if there is an error, we show this message and then we have a required obviously because the email address is the only field which is required. Now, obviously in our form, we are making the password required as well, right? So I'm, I was saying that if you look at the mutation, the password is not required because Vendor allows us to register a component, uh, sorry, customer in different ways. I'm too much into components. I think I'm always talking about components, but yeah, this is not component. So yeah, Vendor has multiple ways of registering a customer. Um, but yeah, we will be always sending the password. So the password is required for us. And then the phone number, it should be minimum 10 characters and then 13 as well. Then both are fine. Okay. So the registration schema is available to us as well. And then we have the form. The form has errors and touched. These two properties are required for the validation purpose. Okay. When when there is any error, we get that inside the errors bag. And if we have any um, an input element being touched, if there is anything changed over here, then we have this. Okay. After that, we have the fields. So we have label. Then I have created this field, uh, taken this field from formic. Okay. This is a formic component. By default, it is of type text. So we have title, placeholder, classes and stuff. And this is a custom component that I have created. So this form field error takes the name of the field. I'm passing the errors and the touched property. If we go inside, let me open it up. Okay. So these are the three props which I have defined over here. And this component does a very simple thing. It checks whether the error name is there or not, and whether it is touched or not. If it is, then it will show that otherwise it does literally nothing. Okay. Obviously the text styling and it is small. So that is how I'm doing it. We will show that you now in the working, but yeah, every field. So this is the title. Then we have first name again, a text field with the form field error, last name form field error. Okay. Pretty straightforward phone number. Again, a text field with the form field error. Everything is quite repeatable, honestly. This is where we have email, 
okay and where is my password yeah so the in in case of password the only change is that i have defined the type as password that's the only change otherwise rest everything is same and then i have a button which does the submit it's the type submit button right so with this in place this form once we fill it so let's try and fill that okay and then let me close it out and hit sign up so what just happened if we look at the payload variable has these properties right email first name last name password phone number okay the title didn't go through i think there is a problem over here i'll have to see query okay my mutation query doesn't have anything but the form submit has happened and if i refresh over here obviously this details will come up the new customer has been created the name email phone number are properly coming up the title has some problem we can fix it later but this basic thing is done so now let's look at how the mutations or rather the mutation not the mutations there is only one mutation over here how we executed it so let's go back to the submit form submit form has you know these things destructured i'm submitting it and sending it to this register mutation which is coming from here but let's first see what we are doing the mutation takes an object in that it has a key called variables and inside that variable key i have this object where all the variables are passed why well because the mutation if i show you the mutation which is over here inside the queries at the root level right if you see it is inside queries mutations we have user registration dot mutation dot ts right so this graphql query takes email first name last name password and phone number <laughs> obviously this means i haven't taken the title at all um how is the format okay title would be a string i can make that change i'll do that later on and i'll update the code but as you can see i'm expecting everything over here this is my way of implementing things okay so the mutation takes these fields and then the register customer account takes this input so let's look at our schema as well so register customer account takes input register customer input the register customer input has these you know, expected fields and it can show us results which are of type success missing password error password validation error and that native authentic authentication strategy error okay i have captured most of them so let's see so we pass the input this is exactly how a mutation schema was defined over here you can see register customer account has input and then this object so we have register customer account input and this object on success i send the success on missing password error we have error code and message on validation this error code and message native auth strategy and the generic result okay um if i want to show you maybe what i can do is actually i won't be able to get an error because the validation of yup will kick in but yes if you make an error right it will handle those over here and that level of error messaging will come come to you okay so yes this is the mutation so we take this we say there is the register function which we are destructuring and taking from here actually this is not destructuring but we are bringing that in because this is the written type of this mutation okay so we take that function and then as we saw this mutation takes an object where we have variables and the variables are defined over here now for this mutation to work obviously i have made some code level changes what i have done is see initially our if i look at the pages then products index can you see over here this service is calling vendor service and if i go to the vendor service this is where the client was instantiated right i'll have to change this to the env url but yeah the the client is instantiated here but when it comes to this registration form you need to understand that this is 
not a server side function or a server side code which is executed this is on the client so our client as of now doesn't know how the apollo client will communicate to the api so we need to configure that right so what i have done is if we go into pages app.tsx apollo client gives us a provider called apollo provider so i have you know this is the component which is rendering right so i have wrapped the entire thing with apollo provider this component of this provider reads client and we have we are passing the apollo client over here and this is something which i have taken help from the vendor authentication uh, documentation so i'll show you uh, vendor graphql um, apollo client config oops sorry i think this is the one right configuring a graphql client apollo client and this is the entire thing i have made some minor modifications but i'll talk about it briefly so what this client does is we are first creating an http link okay and we are creating an apollo link these two are required because the apollo client needs them so this is quite straightforward we are creating an instance of http link this is the uri where our you are um, the graphql api is then this is the afterware link um, the apollo link which we are creating okay it is kind of a middleware because what it does is it gets the context and then it checks the auth header okay if which is when your auth header if it finds it then it puts it in the local storage okay and then it it returns the response so that's what it is doing and then the apollo client what we are doing over here is we are passing a link the after link and http link which we just created and obviously the cache right and in here in the apollo link is from this context where we have you know the auth token which we are requesting from the local storage if we find the auth token then we are saying that this is an authenticated user so we pass the header where the authorization header is set with bearer and then the auth token but if it is not found then the header is not set and you know graphql requests will go as anonymous you are uh, requests right so yeah this is configured the set context and then the afterware link and the http link which we created on top right and with this basically we are able to configure our apollo client pro using this provider and that's how when this mutation is executed right obviously at this point the headers will not be passed because the local host or sorry the local storage will not have that entry but when we log in that thing will come into picture and you know the header will be stored but right now because this is register you may not be able to see that in the local storage token okay but yeah that's how the functionality works as i showed you the once the, you fill the registration form this thing is getting captured so now let's try to do one thing after the registration is done let's just say we take it in a variable this is going to be an await so this becomes an async function okay and let's see what do we get in the response oops so if we get no error if this then we try to reset the form and let's see if this works i hit refresh do i have a user as john doe let me see yes i'll delete it okay and now hit submit I think what is happening is this initial values are creating a problem let me set them to empty it must be setting everything to the initial value and my initial values are not empty so it can create a problem that's what i understand so let's quickly check that out i'll refresh right this is done so mr 
um, test user phone number is 9820098200 okay this is the phone number and let's try and see what happens now yes the reset works so as you understand you know based on the behavior we can do a lot of things but yeah the registration works let's see the customer should be visible ideally yes and it does so that basically concludes our this video of how we created this form this registration form and how we you know set well, how we have set up our apollo client and we have configured everything so that a user registration can happen there is a step around you know verifying a user in vendor but i don't think that is something which we need to know in the graphql videos so i'll create a small video making you understand how that works but beyond that what i will do next is try to give you the concept um, show you the login and then we will look at certain aspects of graphql like the fragments and stuff so that we can conclude this series so yeah that's about it guys if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel